Time to shine today, Podcast Varsity Squad. This is Scott Ferguson, and I got my Sky Team rock star who was introduced to me by my VIP rock star, Miss Casey Haston. And I got Morag Barrett from the Sky Team. She is the co she's the author of Cultivate, which if you listen to the end, I'm gonna have a book giveaway that will be John Hancock by my good friend Morag. Um, she is, again, she's the author of Cultivate, The Power of Winning Relationships and the Future-Proof Workplace. Her mantra is, business is personal, relationships matter. As the founder of Sky Team, an international executive development company, development company, she supported the development of more than 10,000 leaders in 20 countries and on six continents. And I cannot wait to dig in to my good friend Morag's story. And Morag, please come on, introduce yourself to the Time to Shine Today podcast for RC Squad. But first... What's your favorite color and why? Purple. Purple. Why is that? Because it's my favorite color. I mean, does it need to go any deeper than that? Yeah, I, I do. Here at Time to Shine today, we like to know that. I it's think that purple rich, is it's vibrant. It's the color of royalty. There you go. You, there you, you, you go. can hear it in her voice. We got a little British going on over there. And royalty is where it's all at. And that's what purple. And purple is also <laughs> red and blue. And blue has that kind of cool and calm. And red is fiery and ready to rock. And I think Morag's a lot of red in there as well. So Morag, let's get to your story. Let's hear about this. I want to see how we came up the Sky Team. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. Well, the potted history. I'm on my fifth career. Okay. I was going to be an engineer, a bit of a geek and nerd. Five people in applied uh, mathematics at high school, you know, that sort of thing. I also uh, did physics. Pants. I think there was six of us in that class. I was the only girl in both. Okay. But there was a chapter I had to do economics as well. And there was a chapter on how banks create money. And I thought, oh, my goodness, this is fascinating. <laughs> so I actually went into banking. And it's nothing like that chapter on economics. But I spent 15 years in banking in the UK, lending millions of pounds to different types of companies, all stages of their evolution. All of them who came to the bank and essentially said, <gasps> Fergie, I've got this new thing. We're going to get rich. Highland cow mugs. <laughs> Love and they have this fancy cash flow forecast, etc. But what I realized quite early on, if it was as easy as the numbers on a spreadsheet, we'd all be rich. Right. And what I realized was that the companies that were successful were the ones that didn't just invest in the widget or service. They paid as much attention to how business gets done, i.e. the human side. So that's what pivoted me from numbers into leadership and executive development. And as a result, I ended up moving to Colorado for an American telecom company. And then 14 years ago, in the blink of an eye, I started Sky Team. And we now work with leaders around the world on how to bring your human to work. And that's the potted story of from there to here and who knows what. And in between two books, a third on the way. Three boys, all six foot tall. Um, I'm a ballroom dancer for a little bit of fun when we're allowed up close with other people. Um, <laughs> there you go. I love that. I love that. Bring your human to work. That's fantastic. So then, Morg, what makes a great leader? One who is curious. Curious about, well, just curiosity for me is what makes the difference to a leader. Because when we're curious, we're open to other people's points of view, wrong though they might be. When we're curious, we're open to the fact that we as leaders might be wrong on many occasions and therefore open to changing our view. So for me, it is curiosity because from that curiosity, you can build connection with the people who work with and for you. Love that. I love curiosity is key in leadership. And that's what I am. I so curious. I want to know about everyone. That's why I kind of started Time to Shine today. Is like I'm curious about everybody's uh, how they got their whys, where they got to, why they're there, and it, I can pick up a knowledge nugget from every single person that I bring on here. It's a selfish thing for me, but my squad, my listeners, my they get to actually you know get the the fruits of that labor as well. So thank you so much. So then, if you're starting to work with a company and you're, you're kind of going the, through the discovery period. What is some secret sauce over at Sky Team, if you don't mind sharing, to help them maybe find their blind spot? So it goes back to curiosity and asking questions and being skeptical. I mean, websites and so on will give you what the marketing team want you to believe about the organization. Glassdoor obviously will give you the predominantly negative stories and those who've got an ax to grind or a story to vent. 
But what we like to do is go in and talk to a cross section of leaders at all levels. So for me, you're asking again, what makes for a great leader? Well, leadership happens at all levels in organizations. So we will go in and spend time, not just reading doc documents, but also understanding what makes this place special. Because irrespective of the blind spots, most organizations are successful. You're in business, that's success. Absolutely. But you're missing opportunities for the sake of, and that dot, 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 will fill in the blank, comes through the power of those conversations. And it always amazes me just what people are willing to share with me, a complete stranger, the outside consultant. <laughs> when I say to them, well, Fergie, have you mentioned that to your boss? Have you raised it internally? And it'll be, oh, no, I couldn't possibly. So right. we're able to then distill down those themes and present them in a way that isn't finger pointing and, pointing and blame, but allows a company and leadership to capitalize on the strengths that are already there but then make an informed decision around where do you want to polish off the edges? Where do you want to course correct so that you can pick up speed and be nimble and agile, especially in a changing environment like we're in right now? I love that. So while you're in that discovery period and kind of working things out and getting a game plan in place, is there any good question that you wish they would ask you but never do? Oh, turning the magic on. I mean, I'm often asked the question that most bamboozles me, befuddles me and a few other bees is how long will this take? <laughs> and the, can you do it in half a day? <laughs> so that whole desire to move fast. <laughs> and I'm always like, yes. well, hang on a minute, you've taken months and years to behave yourself into this situation. <laughs> it's gonna make more than a, I mean, I'm good. My team right. is very good, but we aren't miracle walkers. Here's sure. the workers, here's some pixie dust and right. Know, and so that's the question, which is an appreciation for when we're talking about culture change, when we're talking about individually and collectively unlearning and relearning new yeah. habits. Anybody who's tried to go on a diet or start a new exercise regime, we all know it right. takes time. Yeah. And so that's the piece where I, I wish sometimes we could have a little, an easier conversation yeah. around just how long is this going to take? It, it didn't take somebody, you know, 20 minutes to get fat it took them months so there there's time and there's that gestation period of the new coaching uh that that happens and i'm, I'm glad i mean i would i wish my clients you know when i bring them in would ask you know what's expected of me a lot of them don't they just expect you to put that pixie dust on like you said and go mm -hmm. forward with that so i, I want to get your because you work with companies and organizations and, and my squad also wants to know but you know, when I get brought in, you know, you'll have, you're, you're usually brought in by like the highest ranker, you know, like the CEO or whatever, but there's always that guy that's below him or girl. And they're like, kind of hurt because they're like, why do we need this person to come in when we're going and we're making money and we're, you know, but the CEO says, listen, there's something missing. We need to level up. How do you handle that? Maybe second person in command? Oh, I love a good skeptic. And here's the thing, I work with the early adopters and there are always going to be, I mean, I was a skeptic. If I go back to my early banking career, I remember, for example, when emotional intelligence was first being talked about as a phrase. And in banking, I remember being told, it's not personal, it's just business. <laughs> and I was still drinking that Kool-Aid and I thought, oh, emotional intelligence, you know, it's the latest buzzword. I remember my boss saying, you know, leave your emotions at the door. Well. The more I study it, the more I come around in terms of this is core to everything. We can't leave our emotions at the door. Think about the last 12 months. I'll be honest, learning to live in a two dimensional Zoom virtual sure. facilitation world was not right. my world. I believed if you want to be a better human, you need to learn to do that with other humans in a 3D environment. Sure. Well, the pandemic made sure that we all had to change. Well, now I have the full studio set up. Mm -hmm. And while I have experienced, and some of your listeners will be the same, PowerPoint presentations and virtual delivery that makes you just want to poke your eye out. Uh, the, yeah, we hate oh, them I've here. got bad internet. I'm going to have to hang up, Fergie. When it's done well, like we've learned to do at Sky Team, it can be transformational. Awesome. You make so when you fun, talk about the relatable. second layer down being, hey, not in my backyard, not me, it's everybody <laughs> else who needs it, fine. You know what? We'll accelerate the success of your peers. And when you see the results that they're getting, you're going to want a piece of that pie. And we'll right. come back to you later. You keep Thank them you looped time. in on everything, though, right, Morag? Say that again. You, you, keep, you keep even the skeptics looped in on oh, everything, correct? 
Absolutely. Bring okay. them on board. Bring the skeptics into the let's design the program then. There you go. You don't believe it's going to work. What does success look like for you? What are the things that you've tried before that we don't want to replicate or we want to try in a different way? Right. So bring them close Love because it. then it's not being done to them. It's being done with them yeah. and it's being done with their own hearts and mind and their own why, as you talked about earlier on, sure. front and center. Love it. I love that you said that. So, you know, have you seen the movie Back to the Future? <laughs> I, I know I look very young, but yes, I have seen Back to the Future okay. Okay. just a couple of times. Love Me that too. Movie. Me too. I'm, a, I'm coming up on 50, so I've, I've seen it probably 40, 50 times. It's again, <laughs> crazy. One of my favorite movies. But let's get in that DeLorean with Marty McFly. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to the 22-year-old Morag. Morag. Mm -hmm. what knowledge nuggets as we call them here at time to shine today what knowledge nuggets are you dropping on her to maybe help her level up blast through maybe shorten that learning curve just a little bit there are two and it's what everything that i do right now and from cultivate it's the fact that relationships matter and whilst i didn't have damaged relationships at work i was not intentional about maintaining and nurturing them and so at 22, if I had invested in my network then, as I did in my mid thirties onwards, and as I do now, I think that would have accelerated my career in a different way. Now, it might mean that you and I aren't meeting right now in a parallel universe, that's right. exactly what's just happened. So I'm glad I didn't have that nugget then. But yeah, it's never too soon to invest in the quality of your relationships. And Love the it. second one is believe in yourself. Because certainly in my banking career, which in the 90s, because I'm the other side of 50, I'll say, Fergie. Um, I can't see it, age. but I'll take your word for it. Well, there you go. So, um, but I remember it, it was definitely a hierarchical male dominated world. When I became a bank manager and a pillar of the community, I started on the entry level salary for that grade, which was a third of what the retiring male manager was making for the exact same role. Wow. But I remember being told I was too young to be a manager. I'd just been put through the accelerated management development program. By <laughs> but you're too so, young. <laughs> but I was still too young. Then it was, you haven't worked in a big enough branch, so you move to the next one. Then you haven't managed a big enough team. It was always hurdles. Yeah. So here's the thing, you've got to stay in the game. So you've got to believe in yourself first and go for those opportunities, even if you aren't 100% checking all the boxes. And if you aren't getting those opportunities where you are, have that conversation with your boss and make a choice to stay anyway or go to a different pond, a different company, a different team to get those opportunities. Love that advice. And I didn't. I, I was working still on the keep my head down, work hard, do good work, and eventually that will get recognized. And we need to all stand in our own truth and be ready to say, actually, I am ready. Give me a chance. Here's what I'm looking for. Well, that's amazing. And thank you for for sharing that. that. That's like transparency with value add, but with a story. And thank, thank you for sharing that. So how do you want your dash remembered, Morag? That, that little line in between your incarnation date and your expiration date, your life date and death date on your tombstone. How do you want Morag's death, uh, dash remembered? Oh, gosh. Having said goodbye to both of my parents, my dad's funeral was part of the catalyst for me because it wasn't just that he knew somebody, he knew everybody. And the first thing that came to mind when you asked about that dash is that dash is a connector. It is. And that's yeah. what I want to be remembered for because the quality and the powerful professional relationships and social relationships we have is what transforms the satisfaction with life, with work, with everything. And so if I want to be remembered, it's as the connector the go-to person who will either help you to identify and resolve your blind spots and challenges, or if I can't, I know somebody who can, and either way you win, you move forward. Love that. Love such a place of service right there. Fantastic. Maura, then what keeps you up at night? Uh, other than indigestion. No, <laughs> I got I that too. Indigestion. <laughs> it was funny this week. I had a 10 hour sleep night, which I've never had, but I put it down to the second COVID jab. And I woke up the next day energized. But what keeps me awake at night, I'm, I'm definitely a glass half full person. I am excited by life, though I share that with the caveat that I recently published a LinkedIn post talk, talking about how I'd lost my mojo and found it again. 
Mm -hmm. So as much as I'm glass half full, that's what keeps me awake at night more often than not is the ideas and the excitement about how can we communicate the importance of our network and relationships at work in a way that resonates for people. And on wow. the dark days when I still have them, like losing my mojo at the beginning of this year, it's the how do I it's still around how do I move faster? It's usually the negative side, which is I'm not moving fast enough. Right. And I have to give myself grace to understand. You gotta give yourself them props, man. No yeah, pat exactly. on the back. You're killing it. I, I love it. So then Morag, what do you think people misunderstand about you the most? What do they misunderstand the most? Other than my accent. <laughs> I love I was it. Once it's kind of sexy. I love it. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, I have a Texas drawl when I'm not on camera. I was once introduced, though, at a keynote where somebody said, when you, when you listen to Morag speak, you'll know she's not from around here. She doesn't speak English. And I'm thinking, um, actually, I do. You all I, know. You don't. Well, y'all speak American English. Right. Um, so how am I often misunderstood? I think my pace. One of the things I am continuing to learn is to enjoy and revel in silence. Mm. Now, being at home arrest for the last year, I've got to enjoy the four <laughs> and silence a lot more. But because I think quick, I join dots in different ways. I get excited about what you're saying. I can talk quickly. I have a, a habit of interrupting. And I have to remind myself that that gets interpreted as rudeness, arrogance. I'm not interested in what you're saying. And in fact, it's quite the reverse. It's you've just said something fabulous and I want to go deep. <laughs> you go deep. <laughs> I want to go deep. Yeah. And I've been using a new phrase in my workshops. It will be in the third book that my misunderstood genius is somebody else's brilliant jerk at best. And at Say worst, that again, your misunderstood jerk. brilliance? Yes, your misunderstood genius. Or genius. Is somebody else's brilliant jerk. Hopefully brilliant. Well, you can drop the brilliant, but that's it. And so when I'm saying, well, it, they just don't understand me, mm -hmm. that's not their problem. That's mine. I'm Did you say just... brilliant jerk? Jerk, yeah. Okay. You know that colleague where you just go, oh, there she goes again. God, the heck up. <laughs> Sometimes you're not saying it out loud, but you're thinking, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, with yeah. a smile on your face. So, Mark, what is your definition of a life well lived? Uh, well, if you look at my corporate values, they kind of represent, well, they do represent my life values. We have eight corporate values. What you need to know is four of them are fun. Okay. And so for me, a life well lived is fun. Live in the moment. Prepare for the future because we don't know what's going to happen. But live for the moment. Don't put off the things that you want to do, whether it's travel, to write a book, to be a keynote speaker, to start a business. Give it a go. Yes. Because what you don't want to do is others are talking about the the connector, the dash at your eulogy yes. to be going, oops, too late. Right. Right. And the thing is, is I have my coaching clients and my companies. And I always tell them to overlap happiness. And what I mean by that is everything's finite. Whether you're going through a bad day, that day's going to end. If, you, if you're like, oh, I'm going to visit Fergie, I'm speaking with Fergie in Miami next weekend, and you're so stoked, guess what? That weekend's going to end, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to fly back to Colorado. You're beautiful, Colorado, but you're, you're so stoked. Like, I just am a big believer to overlap happiness, whether it's holding a door for someone and making them smile or passing on the compliment. That's, that's one thing that I know that you do because I've watched some of your YouTubes. I've watched you in action a little bit, and I love that you do that. So let's take our cell phone, our computer, our tablets, anything electronic out of this question. Let's take it out. What are three things that more I can't live without? So I can't live without the ballroom dancing. I only started I love it. that a few years can't ago. Can't wait to look that up. Goodness. That is like fly me to the moon, a bit of Frank Sinatra, a good foxtrot, mm -hmm. or going to the Grizzly Rose and the cowboy bar and doing a you know, swing dancing or whatever. Okay. Love it. And something that I didn't think I would ever be able to do. So that and music. And okay. so when my mum passed away, because classical music was what I grew up with, I mm. was not rock and pop and stuff, but okay. it was classical music. When she passed away for literally five years, I couldn't listen to music. It was just too ingrained in memories. It was heartbreaking. Sorry. And it coincided at the end of that period, moving to the States, 
-hmm. and joining the Broomfield Symphony Orchestra. And I'm a bassoonist, a flautist. I also play the piano. And so I you're remember a, you're a flaunter. I'm kidding. Flauter, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Right. Flutist, I think, is how you pronounce it in American <laughs> English. But I remember coming back from that first rehearsal, Fergie, and I was literally bouncing off the walls. I had refound myself because I'd put it in a little box and put it away. So they're that. kind of connected. Dancing, that's the movement, music, and just, you know, good chat. A glass of wine and friends and colleagues. It's the mm. fun piece in a different way, but at a slower pace. Yes. Background music and just putting the world to rights. You're in a lot of community in those three things, and I love that mm -hmm. about you. That, that's fantastic. So, Squad, we're going to take my good friend Morag Barrett into our leveling up lightning round just as soon as we get back from thanking our sponsors and affiliates. Time to shine today, Podcast Varsity Squad. We are back with my Sky Team rock star, Morag Barrett. And Morag, we like to take our interviewees through our leveling up lightning round. You and I could talk literally, and I'm not even exaggerating, an hour on each one of these questions. You have five seconds with no explanation. So that urge to talk and explain, drop it for these six or seven questions. You ready to rock? Indeed. All right, let's level up. Morag, what's the best leveling up advice you've ever received? Take the step forward. Yes. Share one of your personal habits that contributes to your success. Passion. Yes. Other than Sky Team, that's S K Y E team.com, and of course, time to shine today.com, my shameless plug. What website do you like to go to to level up? HBR. Beautiful. Morag, you're seeing me. You're like, Fergie just looks like he's in his doldrums. He's a little bit down. Other than cultivate. What book would you hand me to level up? Oh, The Advice Trap by Michael Bungay. You are the first freaking person to ever say it, and that's fantastic read. So I'm putting that in the show notes. Thank you so, so much. Morik, what is your most commonly used emoji? Oh, smiley face or a unicorn. I'm going with Love it, love it. Okay, and don't freaking lie to me on this, young lady. Okay? okay? But if you could stay one age for the rest of your life physically physically for the rest of your life and still keep all the knowledge you've garnered and continue to seek wisdom. What age physically would you stay for the rest of your life? Whatever it is today. Okay. Today well, you're, the best day yeah, I'll take 32 all day. I've been in combat sports my whole life and I'm coming up on 50. I'll take 32. You're a liar, but I love you. So what's your favorite charity and or organization you like to give your time or money to? Uh, all right. So anything to do with the arts. So music. Yay. Awesome. Last question. I know you didn't really get into music, but what is the best decade of music to you? 60s, 70s, 80s, or 90s? You can elaborate. <laughs> oh, no. Um, so I'm going to go with the 90s. Really? Okay. Yeah, why not? I was just leaving high school and I was listening to more of it then, but it was still <laughs> an eclectic se selection. Got it. I'm an 80s guy just because everything happened. I was born in 72, so like 80s is my years. So you had, um, you know, all the, the British invasion more. I mean, obviously the Beatles, but in the 60s, but like you had the British invasion, the Irish invasion with U2, Duran Duran, all that stuff. So I'm an 80s guy, but I respect the 90s. I, I was in the military the whole time the 90s were. So it was funny. I would go to sea. I'd come back and all these new songs would be on the radio and they were so good. They're like, dude, that song came out like seven months ago. I'd be like, I've been gone a year. <laughs> That's awesome. So Miss Morag, how can we find you? So the website, which you kindly shared earlier, SkyTeam, S-K-Y-E, team.com. But the reality is with an unusual name, just Google Morag Barrett, you'll find me. And please do connect with me on LinkedIn. I'd love to get to know your story. Excellent. And we're going to put that on the show notes. In Squad, we're also going to have a giveaway of Cultivate, The Power of Winning Relationships, paperback version. I'm going to purchase it and send it to my good friend, Morag, and she's going to sign it and send it to the first person that comments on either LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, anywhere with Sky Team. I love Sky Team. I must say, I love Sky Team, and we will get your information. I'm going to send the book to, I'm going to purchase the book. Morag will sign it, and hopefully she'll take care of the postage. If not, I'll take care of that as well. But we're, that is just fantastic. I can't wait to read. I just put it on my list. I'm sorry that I've just been crazy booked, or else I usually read all my guest stuff, but I'm going to read it. And <laughs> Morag, if you can, pretty please, leave us with one last knowledge nugget you want us to take with us, internalize, and take action on. Investing in your professional relationships is not a nice to do, 
it's a need to do because business is personal and relationships matter. Yes. So it's not a nice to do, but a need to do. Love that. That is going as your quote. And squad, we just had a free masterclass from a really, really good friend, Morik Barrett, who's in her fifth career. You know, she wants you to bring your human to work. She believes that a great leader is curious. It keeps you open to others point of view, even if they're wrong, you can still learn from them. But also you might pick up a step from one of your subordinates that can actually help you level up. Just make sure you give them the credit. Also, you know, she believes in asking powerful questions and listens with all the senses, not just her ears, but her eyes. She's going to watch your, your emotions. She's going to watch your reactions. And when she wants you to remember that relationships matter, to be intentional and, and maintain and nurture those relationships. She wants you to believe in yourself. Stay in the game. Like we say here from my good friend, Leah Woodford, get your asking gear. If you don't know something, ask somebody and stand in your own amazement. She will, she will be remembered and she is being remembered on a macro scale as a connector, the go-to person. She does that all through the service. She, she does what she loves in the service of people that loves what she does. And that's what I love about my good friend, Morag. She wants you to communicate to resonate. She wants you to learn to revel in silence. Like we say, have a daily sabbatical. Just mm -hmm. shut up. Silence is golden. The answers are always in silence. And also, I have pages of notes. I'm just picking the ones that have really stand up. <laughs> she wants you to have fun, fun in the moment, but prepare the, to the, for the future. And relationships and good and business and personal is not a nice to do, but a need to do. And like she said before, maintain and nurture those relationships. That's what my good friend Morag does. She's humble yet hungry. She levels up her health. She levels up her wealth. She's part of the Time to Shine Today podcast varsity squad. She's earned her varsity letter. I'm blessed to know her, and I can't wait to collaborate with her a little bit in the future. Love your guts so much. Thanks, Fergie. It's been a pleasure. Yay. Talk soon. Bye now.